welcome to Tycon 2019. This is Rocky Sharma from Sitara TV, and I would like to welcome NG Crackler from IBM Corporation and Dr. C. Mohan from uh, IBM Corporation. So welcome here. Thank how you. are you? How are you finding Tycon 29? It's Thank great. You. It's always been a really good event every year. So glad to be part of it. Yeah, and I've been involved in it for quite a long time as content chair, and this year also, like last year. Mm -hmm. I've been the content chair for the blockchain track, and there are some new things that have been introduced compared to the past conferences. And being a Silicon Valley guy, I've attended a lot of um, Tycon events as well as Thai Silicon Valley events. Mm -hmm. And so, like we had the CIO forum, mm -hmm. which is a novel thing that was intended to integrate, I mean, give an opportunity for the startup people to get to know CIOs and get access to enterprise kind of customers and many of the keynotes were quite good. Fantastic. So could you please tell us a little bit about uh, initi IBM's initiative in blockchain? Oh, well, IBM has a great leadership in the space, having been uh, firmly behind the emergence of the Hyperledger Consortium, mm -hmm. which was initiated by IBM by contributing source code that was developed as a project within IBM, mm -hmm. and that formed the basis for the fabric uh, system. Of course, Hyperledger is an umbrella uh, entity under which there are many projects. Mm -hmm. And so there are other, if you like, competing systems like uh, Hyperledger, Sawtooth, and a uh, bunch of other tools-oriented projects. So IBM even contributed another one called Composer. Okay. And so, uh, and IBM, of course, like many other companies now, more recently, mm -hmm. has a blockchain as a service offering. Mm -hmm. So Oracle did it more recently, and there are many Chinese vendors who have also done it based on, in most cases, the Hyperledger Fabric. So in that sense, in the private blockchain domain, Hyperledger Fabric has great momentum. Okay, and I understand there was something over here that you wanted to talk about. Yes. So. so we have a program here, it's called Call for Co, mm -hmm. and Co in Response. And this is an initiative that started by IBM. Um, well, we're a founding member, working with David Clark Koss. Mm -hmm. And this is to invite all the developers out there to build solutions that can help solve natural disaster situation. Awesome. So, I mean, instead of just going to hackathon building something, why don't we build something and that can solve real problem and help the society? So that's what the Call for Co program is about. So. Yeah, that's such a noble cause, I would say, and I'm sure uh, programmers, if they will see call for code, I'm sure they will step ahead and they will contribute to this. Yeah. So and she's about to go on a tour of Asia <laughs> and yeah. Australia. It's a global program, and people, it's an online challenge, and mm -hmm. people have till end of July mm -hmm. to submit. If they need any information, stop by the booth. We're happy to tell them about it. I see. And can you tell me the dates? When are they, when is this exactly going to get started? Okay. So the program is open now, and it ends on July 29th. Okay. So developer can submit their program. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we have over 100,000 developer participated. So this year we're looking for more people. It's a global program, and um, you can like in California we have people that want to build something to help the fire situation. Mm -hmm. In Puerto Rico, we actually have um, flood situation. So the winning team from last year, mm -hmm. we're actually helping them deploy that solution and testing it right now at Puerto Rico. Oh, fantastic, great. I would like to add one more thing about the uh, blockchain topic that you asked. IBM is also, of course, uh, developing a lot of uh, use case scenarios and products based on solutions that depend on mm -hmm. blockchain. So. We in our blockchain track yesterday afternoon, mm -hmm. enterprise blockchain track, mm -hmm. had an IBMer. Mm -hmm. She is a offering director for what's called the Food Trust, okay. which is a food safety oriented mm -hmm. um, uh, solution. Mm -hmm. And this is Suzanne Livingston. So there are many use case uh, avenues that we are using to leverage blockchain technology. So another one is called Trade Lens. Mm -hmm. That was done with uh, the world's largest shipping company, Maersk. Mm -hmm. The Food Trust one originally uh, was done with the Walmart. Mm -hmm. And there are many players now involved in that, Dole and so on. So the many of these things are in production deployment. Mm -hmm. So the message is that private blockchains, which are very new really, compared to public blockchains, which have been around for about a decade now, whereas the private ones are just about two and a half to three years old. 
they already have quite a bit of uh, activity associated with them in terms of products coming out and uh, people trying them out as well as deploying them in production. See. Yeah, I heard uh, Susan yesterday in a blockchain oh, panel. Okay. Just a little bit, I'm sure, like uh, uh, people who are going to hear her again today, so they are going to get a lot of knowledge on blockchain, especially the uh, food in the uh, food chain area. So that is something really interesting. Thank so yeah, thank you. Actually, blockchain is also one of the technology you can use to solve problems. So we have AI, we have Watson, IoT, yes. blockchain. They they can all be used to solve the problem build a solution for the call for code and code and response. Fantastic. Thank you very Thank much you, for your time. Thank yep. you. Thank and uh, all the very best for your next initiative. Thank Thanks. You.